Thanks for joining us today. I'm MJ Inveen. I'm gonna be talking about the Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus. So what is it exactly? It's one of the greatest hoards to ever exist in US coinage. We're talking about United States gold coins that have somehow survived the melting process in 1933 and were moved somewhere overseas and somehow saved from that process is truly a miracle and a great mystery. And the coins that were gathered in 1933 were then melted and put into bars that are now residing in Fort Knox. And these were missed. These were saved and held in a place that they didn't lose any visual appeal. I mean, it's absolutely astounding that I'm seeing something that looks like it was freshly struck. What truly speaks to me, and I'd imagine a lot of you, is to have that piece of American history in your hands. What I'm holding here is two pieces that are just being released today, that this is a perfect opportunity to really get into something special. It's gonna be both a $5 and a $10 Liberty coin. These are two pieces that really started rebuilding our nation after uh, a civil war ravaged our country in the bloodiest war ever on American soil. So to have access to not only coins that represented that change of our country, but to have them in the most special state that were not touched by human hands for well over a hundred years. These are special coins. When I say reserve plus, I mean specifically that these were given a plus designation by the grading service PCGS. When coins typically would go into bags, they would clink against one another or in pockets for those that were transacted. But these are uncirculated coins that aren't going to have those same blemishes. These are the pieces that literally are among the best of the best and is truly a reserve for this opportunity. So to get access to a 62 or a high 63, and then a plus level, you're talking about the highest echelon of, of uncirculated coins. That's why I'm so excited. And if you act now and you act quickly, you truly get your best options of the best of the best. Because I meant what I said, it really is a finite amount of coins and only those people that act quickly get access to them. So. One of the greatest things about a hoard and, and what has happened is, is really the mystery and the allure. Why was it shrouded in mystery is, is really one of the questions that we're gonna get into. And we have to think what was happening during its time. And we, we know that these coins were struck during 18, between 1838 and, and 1933, but what exactly made them be saved specifically? Uh, we're gonna be talking to a number of experts that are gonna help us understand where they came from, how did they get saved? Are, were there things happening in the United States that prompted the movement overseas and away from transacting hands? And I'm beyond excited to share with you what we have today. Thanks for joining us again. I'm here today with John Krelovich. John, thanks for joining the show. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'm a full-time professional numismatist. I've been doing this pretty much my whole life. I was a, a childhood hobbyist who liked collecting coins, loved history, loved the feeling of having an artifact in my hand from the time I was tiny, tiny, and I'm one of the lucky guys that gets to do what he loves for a living. So it's great, I, I play with rare coins all day, every day. I love that, yeah. yeah. You know, to be able to do something that you just enjoyed as a kid and being able to continue to do that, and that's what makes us so fun. Yes. So to get right into it, what can you tell us about the Fairmont collection? Well, it's all gold coins. We'll start there. So it's all gold coins struck uh, by the United States mints, pretty much all from 1835 up through the early 1930s. So in, in 1933, as you know, the U.S. government bans the ownership of gold by private citizens. Mm -hmm. So gold coins tended to kind of go into hiding at that point. A lot of them ended up in bank vaults. There was a special sort of cutout in the law for numismatic coins, in other words, coins that collectors liked, uh, because FDR, Secretary of the Treasury at that point, was a coin collector. So there was a cutout in the law for numismatic gold coins. So mm. uh, the coins in the Fairmount collection, we don't know mm. where they came from, but they were put away at some points uh, and survived that era from 1933 to 1974, when the general public was not allowed to own any kind of gold except for numismatic gold. Mm. So these things would have been carried somewhere as basically the face value of their gold, uh, essentially worth whatever their weight was in gold. 
uh, and they, they came out, as sometimes these groups do. Uh, and when they came out, it was, a, 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 it, was, it was a big day for the numismatic community because the quality of these coins and sort of the breadth of the collection was unlike anything we had ever seen. I mean, I, I've been doing this full time for 25 years and as a hobbyist for many, many years before that, we've seen a lot of U.S. gold coins that were stuck away after 1933 come out over the years. Mm -hmm. um, these are special. These are different, and the nice thing about them is the quality of them, in terms of preservation, is much higher than we're apt to see in groups like this. And so many of these coins are so pristine and so nicely preserved that when they appeared, it, it, it sort of mystified those of us who do this for a living, where have these things been? How, how'd they come out so nice? And I don't know the answer, but, but here they are, and, and nicely, they're available to be collected now. Wow. That's amazing. And to think that over this entire time, like no one probably touched these, no one did anything with them. They yeah. obviously weren't traded for anything. They were just gone. So that's obviously the backstory. Tell yeah. me a little bit about what was the excitement like? What what was uh, uh, the market's impression? Well, so as a numismatic historian, first of all, I'm going to nerd out with you for a second. <laughs> I <first>. love it. <laughs> the nerdy part was you get to see this completely uncurated group of gold coins mm. that were put away when these weren't collectibles, when they were mm. just gold for gold's sake. And it's interesting to see the mints they came from. Mm. Um, the, there were seven different U.S. mints that struck U.S. gold coins. And these aren't all from San Francisco or Philadelphia. Mm. They're from some of the rarer mints like Charlotte or like Dahlonega, Georgia, which was founded in the 1830s after a, a, a gold vein was discovered in the mountains of northern Georgia. So these things come from the whole realm of, of U.S. gold coin history, again, 100 years worth from the 1830s to the 1930s, all of these geographically disparate mints. Mm. And it, so there's this time capsule quality that no matter how long you've been in this business and how involved you've been in the marketing of coins as a commodity or as an investment or just as an object of value, anyone who saw them had to kind of nerd out a little bit yeah. over this time capsule aspect of being sort of the first modern numismatist to encounter them and being able to study what was in there, what wasn't in there, and again, this unusual quality of things that were put away, and like you said, just plain not touched for generations. Wow, I love it. Well, obviously being in the business for as long as you have and being an expert and a numismatist, you had to have obviously encountered other hordes. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes this hoard unique in terms of its eye appeal? Sure, uh, you know, when, when coins don't get touched, they, it's sort of a process of benign neglect. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in your house, you don't want things to be dusty. You don't yeah. want them to pick up a patina. You know, we scrub things, we clean things. In coins, we don't do that. Right. We don't clean right. it, we don't scrub yeah. them. We don't want them all shiny. We want them looking old, they are old. Mm -hmm. And we want them more or less left alone. And these are totally left alone. Mm -hmm. And when a lot of, of like you said, hordes or, or large groups come out, typically the first people to encounter them are not professional numismatists. Mm, you know, if you sure. find a, a hoard of Roman coins in the ground in England or Germany or whatever, the person who finds them is going to scrub them up. What do we have? I can't see it. Let's scrub it up. Yeah. Gold is a peculiar metal. The reason that gold is made into coins and is called a noble metal, it is non-reactive and it doesn't change with its environment. It doesn't corrode. It doesn't oxidize. It doesn't mm. get dark like silver or get pitted like copper. So all gold does is sit there and be gold but it will acquire the sort of dust of generations. And when you look at these coins, I mean, it's like a mummy coming out of a sarcophagus or something. <laughs> it's got the dust on it that says no one's ever played with these things. And it, wow. it's, it's priceless to see a group like that. Oh, that's amazing. So tell us a little bit about the rarity. Like, sure. obviously these coins, many of them are melted down. You know, they come back into the fold, but this hoard specifically, like, yes. what's its rarity like? So in terms of rarity of these gold coins, so there's basically two kinds of, of rarity in the world of coin collector and numismatics. You've got empirical rarity, just how many were made. And that's very, very easy for everyone to understand. Something that had 500 made is rarer than something that had 500 million made. Mm. You talked about melting, there's a survivorship issue too. Just as these gold coins would have, in many cases, been made from earlier kinds of gold coins that would have been melted down and recycled. Oh. 
many of these gold coins from this era have been melted over the years okay. and turned into more modern gold coins from our country, from other countries, turned into ingots or, you know, turned into jewelry or industrial gold or whatever. That gold has to come from somewhere. So you've got, you've got empirical rarity. You've got the rarity based upon how many have survived. But with Fairmount, what's particularly important is not just the rarity of the individual coins in terms of their production numbers, but the condition rarity mm. or the grade. Mm. So if a coin has 500 million made and everybody can get one, that's great. But if none of them are pristine, that makes a very, very high condition coin a great rarity, mm. even though it's sort of common in general terms. Yeah. It's easy to find a Camaro. It's hard to find a Camaro that's been sitting in a garage for 40 years covered in chamois <laughs> that looks like the day it rolled off the showroom floor, right? Right, right. And so that's kind of what we've got with Fairmont. If we've got right. a whole bunch of brand new Camaros from 50 years ago that look like they've never been touched that have the odometer at zero. Unbelievable. So that's a very, very rare item. Yeah. So we've got coins in here that have low mintages that are rare dates and special for that reason. But then you've got things that maybe aren't rare as dates, but are in a very, very rare quality. Wow. John, thank you so much for spending time with us today. That information was absolutely invaluable, and especially for somebody that's an expert in the industry, as many years as you've been it, it really does help me and, and, and probably all of our viewers understand why this is a unique opportunity. Yeah. Thanks again. Happy to be here. Thank you, sir. I think what's interesting when you think about what the experts have said, what we think about it, we've never seen anything like this before in many years in coins. The experts have never seen anything like this in their many years of coins. It is absolutely beautiful to have something in your hands that doesn't look like it's ever been transacted, ever been circulated among the public. But beyond that, it's the mystery and the allure that you then get to see and you get to hold in your hand. So instead of just looking at something that's out there in the market that you can get in maybe a, a, a 62 or a 63 grade, you're getting that top echelon of what PCGS has graded a 62 or 63 plus that is gonna be in that top third of visual appeal, of original luster, of having very few scratches and marks, and that's what you get to then be a part of. It's not you witnessing history, it's you owning that piece of history and you being able to tell that story for yourself to your kids, your grandkids, to other generations. And to miss that opportunity is something that I would never advise. I mean, we don't get to see this, this type of opportunity literally ever. And to know there's a finite number of coins, to know that you really only have a small window of opportunity to get the best of the best, you gotta jump on it now. So if you like Americana, which we all know people do, and I personally collect it as well, what do people look for? They look for luster. And this plus that we're looking at here, the $5 Eagle, not only says that this is gonna be different than any other coins in the marketplace, that you have one of the uh, honeycomb is what they refer it as, luster. So you're holding not only history, you're holding quality, but one thing I've learned over the hordes over the years, whether it's the Great Kentucky Hoard or many other hordes, is that once the news gets out there, right, a lot of the quality, especially the Reserve Plus that we're talking about, they're gonna be gone. This, this is an interesting time, this Fairmont Reserve Plus, because you're talking about the best of the best, the best quality and the best luster, and you have to see it for yourself because once you hold it next to anything out there, even in the same type of grade, this plus separates day and night. The $10 Lady Liberty or Liberty coin is one of the most beautiful coins in that Lady Liberty profile view looking out to the west in the original coronet um, headdress in the words Liberty clearly identified. All, and along the perimeter you have the stars, 13 stars representing our 13 colonies and the birth of our nation, along with the date at the bottom. And then the reverse gets even better. You, have at, you, you literally are looking at one of the most majestic eagles to ever grace a, a legal tender US gold coin to really exemplify our liberty, our freedom, all the things that we hold dear as Americans. And it indicates the United States of America along uh, the top, the eagle with the great seal front and center on the chest of the eagle. And then in, in the talons, you can see clutched in each talon things that have now been used in even modern US coins with arrows, 
and uh, the laurel leaf with the 10D as a denomination at the bottom. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. And you can see every single detail in the Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus as it was originally struck. The history of this particular coin, just to put it in context at the time, they wanted to be able to create a design that showed the more modern day Lady Liberty. And so Christian Gobrick had a lot of pride in making sure that he did this right. And so if you look at this coin in particular, you'll notice a, key, a couple key features. Uh, one, at, the, at that time, the lady having her hair up in the bun, so she's more modern. It's not like the old classic allegorical type of figures. Then you look at the 13 stars for obviously the 13 original colonies. But if you keep, continue to look, you obviously have the date. But if you look on the reverse, and this is where I think, you know, when you look back and you see, hear people talk about coins, they talk about it, how they didn't look good back then. Well, I'd beg to differ because when you're looking at the reverse, even some of the greats like Augustus St. Gaudens said that they did a, a heck of a job with the eagle on the reverse. So they wanted to have the strength of the eagle. So in prior, when you looked at some of the old, even the 1700s, uh, early 1800s, the eagle's wings were down. Now you look in the reverse and you see the eagle's wings extended, a uh, sign of strength of our country at the time. Um, but then even if you look a little bit closer, obviously the details of this particular coin, the United States of America, you have all the details on there, but the big key takeaway at that time was this was a, a, an opportunity for us as a country to show our strength. And that's what the whole back of this coin, the reverse shows in this particular coin, strength of America. The Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus is a limited supply. These coins, are among the highest grades that you're going to find. I mean, we're literally talking about a Mint State 62 and 63 plus designation. The Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus, uh, one of the largest hoards in US history, but one thing we know about great hoards and great stories, you've gotta be quick to act. Call now before they're gone. I'm here with Brian Johnson. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and, and talk a little bit about yourself? Hey, Matt, thanks for having me here. Yeah, no, I've been around uh, coins and precious metals my, my entire career, spoken to many, many, many collectors, and ultimately over the years have seen billions of dollars of coins and precious metals uh, traded in the marketplace. So how did you uh, get into this business? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, thinking back, my grandfather gave me some coins that I still have today that he collected and you know it's in the album just like people buy date buy mint mark the whole nine yards I never thought that I would be in coins per se or be in this market um, I've always had an interest for uh, numbers and finance and uh, business and investments and things like that and I think just if you want to say the stars aligned over time yeah. The, the question I get from my customers all the time, they all, it seems that it's always like the frequently asked question, why are coins graded? Oh, great question. It goes all the way back to 1948, a guy by the name of William Sheldon. At the time, all the coins were just raw. They were just the coins themselves that people had in circulation. Some people had nice looking coins and there was a lot of beat up coins. So he came up with a scale uh, where uh, numerical grade of 70 was considered a perfect coin. It would go all the way down to zero if the coin was just totally beat up, scuffs, you can see any of the design. So he kind of proposed that to the, the collecting community, the dealers, nothing really took hold, right? So that was in 1948. So you go through the 50s, you go through the 60s, it wasn't until the late 1970s that people started talking about, yeah, we need some, some type of classification. People can see quality differences in coins. So in 1986, is when PCGS, Professional Coin Grading Service, was uh, founded. So it's been nearly 40 years now, and they've graded millions and millions and millions of coins, and they're one of the preeminent top third-party or independent grading services uh, worldwide. And that, that gives you a little bit of the history. Talk, can you tell us a little bit about um, why somebody would want, and specifically for this hoard, for instance, why would they want something in like these PCGS holders, for instance? Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about um, the, how a coin is graded, and then like, you know, what is this holder that the coin is in? There's, coin grading comes down to three primary factors. Uh, the graders are looking, for, looking at 
uh, the strike quality when these things were when the coins were manufactured at the mint, how did, the press that made them was the quality of the strike. <clears throat> They're also looking at the surface marks or the nicks and scratches on the coins because of how these coins were distributed or stored or transferred. And then the third uh, element is the luster or the eye appeal of the coin. So those three, uh, we'll call it primary factors are taken into consideration. And then the expert graders, which they themselves are professionals. That's what they do all the time. They're known and respected in the industry and they take it seriously because they know and the industry knows that the grade that's assigned to the coin at the end of the day determines that coin's value. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I always got it. I always found it fascinating. Customers go, why is there confidence in the grade? Like, could I not open this thing up? Why would somebody want to keep it in that holder once it's certified? Oh, great question. Yeah. This is a, the process after they go through to determine what the numerical grade is of a coin. As I said before, a 70 is a perfect grade. Anything that's 16 above is considered an uncirculated coin. So one of the reasons why, even if you had a, a lower grade coin, you'd still want it in a holder, but especially for these coins that are a part of the Fairmont collection with the reserve plus pedigree, you want them in this holder because it's a tamper-proof holder, right? It's a sonically sealed case. In the industry, we call them a slab. It's just a nickname given to them, but this is a it's a way to protect the coin, right? So it's an airtight holder so that after it's graded, that coin will stay in its pristine condition. You'll also see on the, the top of the holder is essentially like that coin's new certificate of authenticity. So PCGS, Professional Coin Grading Service, they're putting their essentially their stamp of approval on the coin. The values in the industry as I said before, are based on the coin's grade. You can have a coin graded, uh, we'll call it in a, in a 62, that let's call that coin might trade for $2,000 or $3,000 in the marketplace. You could have a coin that's three grades higher, and depending on how many are minted or where they're minted and different things like that, that coin might sell for $20,000. Mm. What I found was fascinating was that when you started collecting, you know, like you said, Franklin's, right, the album, what is the what is the opportunity for some people to almost like go through that same experience that got you into this space that they have here with this specific collection? Yeah, yeah. Thinking back to myself, uh, I didn't have, uh, or I wasn't introduced to grading. My grandfather didn't have grading at the time. He was very, uh, like a lot of collectors at the time, he had the the albums that they would flip through. So in that case, my grandfather gave me uh, that collection. That's what uh, families do. They like to pass on uh, items of, of value or items that mean something to them. Uh, that's their, it's a piece of their legacy. It's not the only thing, but it is something that uh, is tangible that they can hold. Mm. Uh, so personally, uh, I may pass that down at some point, maybe over after I acquire a few more pieces from my own collection. And I think with, uh, these coins, and specifically this $10 gold Liberty that I'm holding, in this case, this is from 1881 in a Mint State 63. A collector now has the opportunity, whether they've been collecting for 50 years or just starting today with this, uh, this vintage gold coin, they have an opportunity to either continue the legacy they've started or start that legacy uh, for themselves, their kids, their family members uh, to pass on. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I think we could we could sit here all day long and talk about this. I just appreciate the time, Brian, and uh, I just appreciate this this whole, this whole education on this whole stuff. And I, I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus, you just heard from the experts. It's not just us being excited about this. This is truly something that 
all of us and really anybody that gets involved can tell you that it, it is truly a great opportunity and not just something that's gonna come along once every you know few weeks or even once every few years. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, something you need to really explore right away. And Brian and John were absolutely 100% correct. You're looking at right now what experts are saying as one of the best lusters that they've ever seen in any horde in American history. So not only you're holding history, you're holding quality. You're looking at something in the honeycomb original luster. And when you're looking at hordes of this type of magnitude, we haven't seen anything like this. It's the largest and the best quality. And to have that is something that we're not just telling you looks really amazing. It's something that PCGS, the experts in grading, have identified in these sonically sealed slabs of being something at the top third or the upper echelon of visual appeal. And that really means something considering they see thousands, if not millions of coins that they literally look at under microscopes to analyze and determine that condition. And to think that among all of them, these qualify for that highest mark within the grade. You're looking at one of the best lusters in, in American history of the original coin. You could put this next to another 63, but you're not gonna be able to put it next to a 63 plus like this. You could see it from five, 10 feet away that there is an original luster to these Experts say like this honeycomb aspect, but the original luster doesn't have the vault dust. It doesn't have spotting. You're looking at its original form and what collectors love to have, they love to have the, the best of the best, and this is the best of the best. Yeah, and beyond that, you, you think of a story. You know, you tell you tell your kids stories and you wanna give them, you know, those those crescendos, those cliffhangers or whatever. And imagine just hearing something that could be a great mystery and, and how they would just be uh, captivated to want to hear the next part and to understand like exactly how did these get saved exactly how even a single coin being held by an American citizen could have caused them ten thousand dollars in fines or ten years in jail and there were thousands of these pieces that were kept in its original state somehow mysteriously over somewhere overseas and, and to think that you get access to something like that is truly remarkable and a very rare opportunity Thank you again for spending time with us today and learning about the Fairmont Collection Reserve Plus. I, you can tell I'm obviously excited. Our experts are excited. I hope that you felt that as well and that you you know, got a little bit of information for you to be, be able to make an educated decision for yourself. We really think that this is going to be something you're gonna be very proud to own. So thank you again for spending time with us today. Have a great day.